golden-headed fish. Long, long ago, at the center of Egypt stood a grand palace. The palace was in grief as their king had lost his sight following an illness. Many doctors tried to restore his vision, but in vain. The whole kingdom prayed relentlessly. A few days later, a boat anchored at the dock, and out came Dr. Wazir. He told the locals that he was a personal physician to a great king across the sea and was willing to take a look at the health of the king of Egypt. Hmm, the illness is bad, but the case is not hopeless. It's difficult, but not impossible. I can bring his vision back, but I would need a very special kind of ointment. I will get you whatever is needed to make that ointment. But you have to save my father. The ointment I need will be made out of the tears of the golden-headed fish. You will find that fish somewhere in the great sea. I am here for a hundred days. If you manage to bring me that fish within that time, I can make the ointment for your father. But if you cannot find that fish till the hundredth day, then I will have to leave you. The prince immediately left along with his men. The great sea was miles away from the palace. The prince and his men left no stone unturned to find the golden-headed fish. Months passed, but the fish was nowhere to be found. Then, on the hundredth day, there was only one hour left for the last day to be over. If I do find the fish till the time I reach the palace with it, Dr. Wazir would have left. <sighs> but I must not stop. I can dive in the water one last time. And so he did. And this time, as fate would have it, he found the golden-headed fish. He brought the fish out of the water and put it in a bowl. But as he was about to call his men and take the boat back, he looked at the fish and was unable to move. The fish looked at him with such pitiful eyes. Even if Dr. Wazir has left, they will kill this fish and try to do all kinds of experiments with it. <sighs> I can't do this. I will accept whatever punishment I deserve. But if I have learned anything from my parents, it is not to hurt an innocent. He released the fish back into the water and left for his palace, well aware that his generosity will not be received well. You let the fish go? How dare you? Throw him into the dungeons! Everybody knew that once if someone was sent to the dungeons in this kingdom, that person is never released or called back. But the prince accepted his punishment quietly and left. That night, the queen sneaked to where the prince was kept. Oh, my son, your father is angry at the moment. I know once he calms down, he will repent his actions. You have to leave this kingdom right now. I have made all the arrangements for you. But mother... I know I am defying the king's orders, but you are the only one this kingdom has, child. I have to protect you. The prince was led through a secret passage which opened to the river. A boat was already waiting for him there. He sadly waved goodbye to his mother and started his journey. After sailing for the whole night, he stopped at a port to rest. As he walked towards a stall to buy fruits, he was approached by a young Arab. Sir, are you new here? Why, yes. Uh, who are you? I am a poor man looking for work. Do you need a servant? 
I could use someone to sail with me, but how do I pay you? You can pay me whatever you feel like at the end of the year, sir. Prince was happy to have found someone to share this long and never-ending journey with. He bought all the essentials and began his journey along with his Arab companion. They sailed together for weeks before they came to a port. It looked like a small kingdom. We must stop here, sir. We have come far from your kingdom and we possibly can't keep sailing for the rest of our lives. We have to settle somewhere so that your kingdom can find you when they are in need. <laughs> you sound so sure. What makes you think they will come looking for me? Hmm. It's just a feeling. The prince and the young Arab got down at the port and began to explore the kingdom. It was a beautiful place. They found an inn to rest where they struck a conversation with the innkeeper. The innkeeper told them that the king was looking to get his beautiful daughter married. He went on talking about how generous and kind she was. The Arab noticed that his prince was already falling in love with this unnamed beauty. Oh, sir, you must go see the princess. No, no, you shouldn't. She is. Oh, please. I am sure my master wants to settle down too. Sir, you must go. Hmm, you are right. I will go tomorrow itself. <sighs> the next day, as planned, the prince entered the royal palace confidently. He walked with grace on the red carpet and bowed to the king. Your Majesty, I am here to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. Is it? All right. I will arrange for the wedding then. Yes, I understand... Your Majesty, don't you want to know who I am? Bah! Doesn't matter. You won't live beyond the twelfth hour of the wedding anyway. You know this, right? Um, no, Your Majesty. I have missed this very crucial piece of information somehow. Could you enlighten me, please? Well, you see... My daughter has married 192 men until now. None of them have managed to survive beyond the 12th hour of their marriage. You can take some time to reconsider your proposal if you want. The prince thought for a while and without any hesitation, promised to return the next day for the wedding ceremony. Back at the inn, you must be crazy! My friend, the princess is obviously in some trouble. She is probably possessed. I must help her. <laughs> I knew you would not budge, sir. We shall face the possessor together. The wedding procession was one of a kind. On one hand, the palace was being decorated lavishly. And on the other hand, in the backyard, the prince's grave was being dug. Everybody was so sure that this foreigner was going to be number 193 to have lost his life. After the wedding came the twelfth hour. The prince sat right in front of his wife in a huge chair. The princess didn't know that the Arab was also in the same room, hiding in the closet. He was waiting to leap out and protect his prince. The clock made a loud noise. It was time. Slowly, a long, shiny serpent came out of the princess's long sleeve. Although the prince was ready to attack, something unexpected happened. Suddenly, there was music in the air. The prince could see the snake inching closer, but he and the princess were both paralyzed to do anything. It was the music. It hypnotized everybody who heard it. But somehow, 
the young Arab didn't lose his senses. He leapt from inside the closet and held the snake by his neck. The music suddenly stopped and both the prince and the princess snapped out of their hypnotized state. The Arab quickly stuffed the snake in a big wooden bottle and shut it closed. Wait, how weren't you affected by the music? Hmm, it doesn't matter, my prince. All that matters is that you are safe. The curse on the princess was lifted. The prince and the princess hugged and cried to have found each other. If that wasn't enough, a few days later, a messenger came to the kingdom. He asked for the prince and gave him the good news. My prince, your father has regained his sight. The queen told him about your departure and he wishes for you and the princess to return. Arrangements were made instantly. Happily, the princess, the prince, and his Arab companion waved goodbye to the king. Once back, Egypt was ecstatic. Celebrations went on for days. But soon, it was time for the Arab to leave. But why? You can stay here. I never considered you my servant. You are a friend. That is your generosity, sir. The very attribute which brought me to you. I don't understand. We fishes have a good memory, sir. Fishes? Yes. I am the same golden-headed fish you once saved. And now that you are back in your kingdom, I must return to mine. I will always be your friend, my prince. I will always be around to protect you. <sighs> you helped me to find my home. I can't possibly stop you from returning to yours. The prince hugged his friend and watched him go. He had tears in his eyes, but a smile on his face. Prince would often go to visit his friend at the Great Sea. He stayed friends with his golden-headed fish for as long as he lived for.